Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2023 and a brand new episode today where we're seeing what would happen if you had the perfect player in non-league football. Now I've actually created this player in the uh, full game editor uh, rather than with the in-game editor and before we go forward in time I will correct these uh, so they're all 20 so uh, with the full game editor it automatically restricts it to the maximum in line with current ability which is 200 and you can't have everything at 20 and it be at 200 current ability but what you can do in the in-game editor is just start editing change all those to a 20 and then you can freeze attributes be very careful not to hit terminate contract but freeze attributes and they will all stay at 20. now the idea with this experiment is we're going to keep this player at a non-league team, the same non-league team, for pretty much his entire career, um, right up until the very end when we will allow him to move on a free contract or via transfer to a different team. So at the moment, the way we're trapping him at the non-league club is by having a fixed transfer in 2042, so 20 years' time when he's 36 years old, to join Real Madrid, but I will cancel that future transfer before it happens, probably one year before it happens, uh, and that will allow him to move freely to a new club and see where he ends up. But to start with, we're going to have him as a 16-year-old English striker playing for Kings Lynn. Uh, you can see it's his first time there. This is just whatever player I hollowed out and used to create the new player. Uh, but in this game, he is Giancaldo, uh, Mr. Giancaldo's son, Giancaldo Jr., um, and at the moment, no real record to speak of, but he will have 20 for everything. Even the hidden attributes are turned up to the maximum. Now, Kings Lynn are in the Vanarama National League North. Uh, you can see here, uh, not the most difficult league. I imagine that they will get out of this one fairly easily. But the real question in this experiment is how much can one player carry a non-league team up the football pyramid and you may remember if you saw the uh, billionaire experiment the money in the game didn't do an awful lot so I'm really interested to see what one excellent striker can do and I chose a striker because they're gonna have a much bigger impact on a game than a good defender will or a good goalkeeper will it's got to be a striker to have that match winning edge and I've limited him to a central striker position as well so he doesn't get bunted out to the wing or central midfield or attacking midfield. I want goals. I want to see him winning the Ballon d'Or in League 2. So what we'll do today is go all the way forward to the end of his career. We'll probably jump 10 years and then another 10 years until he hits retirement. Um, and we will just keep track of what he manages to achieve with Kings Lynn as we go. So let's go forward 10 years into the future now and see if Kings Lynn have become a powerhouse in English football. Well, we are now 10 years into the future, and you can see in his first game with Kings Lynn in a friendly, he scored a hat trick inside 52 minutes as they beat Royston. In his first league game as a footballer, he also scored a hat trick, and his scoring run kept continuing. Another hat trick there, two more goals here. Um, but the problem he has is that he has no control over the defence, and yet even then, Kings Lynn were keeping a lot of clean sheets. They were staying unbeaten for a very long time as well, including in the FA Cup second qualifying round, a nice 6-0 win there over Lancaster, and they kept on smashing team after team to make it into the FA Cup first round, where with a replay, they managed to get past Colchester as well. Uh, you can see a good run in the FA Cup trophy as well. And they actually made it to the FA Cup for third round where they had to take on Preston. Unfortunately, he couldn't score in the home game. Uh, and then in the return leg, they were beaten 3-0. The defence not quite holding up against that uh, higher league opposition. But in the Vanarama North, I still don't think they've lost a game here. Uh, running through and finally against Kidderminster away from home they are beaten 3-1 but they make it into the FA Trophy semi-final um, and I don't think he actually scores in that semi-final he doesn't but in the final against Eastleigh at Wembley he scores twice including from the penalty spot for a 3-0 victory they went through the entire league season only losing once and that means that they did manage to make it into the Vanarama National League so winning the title there in his first season. You can see in the Vanarama National League, he scores again 
in his first game. They don't have another run in the FA Cup like they did before, knocked out in the first round there. But the FA Trophy continues ticking along as they run through into the fifth round with a 1-0 win and then in the quarterfinal, a one-all draw before coming back in the second one. He's not actually scoring in these games though. But he does score twice as they beat Aldershot 2-0 and then he doesn't score when they win 3-1 but they make it to another consecutive FA Trophy final and at Wembley with 3,000 less fans there than the season before, they do manage to win the league. They lost a few Manorama National League games but of course they did get promoted up into League 2 and in his first game as a uh, professional footballer, uh, or not professional footballer, as a, a, a club, a, a league football club, that's the word I'm reaching for. Um, he doesn't score, but they get a 3 0 win. They also beat Watford in the Carabao Cup first round. That's a massive scalp. Scalp him scoring both goals in that win, including an 88th minute winner at Vicarage Road. But unfortunately, they can't get through on penalties against Charlton in the second round. He does miss a penalty there. They're into the Papa John's trophy, though, so we'll keep an eye on how they do there. And they get through against Ebsley in the first round of the FA Cup. And you can see out in the third round to Bournemouth is a bit of a shame. They don't do so well in the Papa John trophy either. But they make the playoffs in League 2. He scores twice to help them sink Carlisle in the first leg. And then they just do the job in the away game. And then against Eastleigh, he scores in the first minute to set them off on their way in front of 51,000 fans at Wembley. And he scores, setting the example in the penalty shootout when every single one of his teammates managed to score as well as they managed to get up into League One at the first time of asking. And then in League One, they start off with a nice 1-0 win over Lincoln he does get the goal in that game but they go out to Burnley in the Carabao Cup first round another run at the Papa John's Trophy where it looks like they do a little bit better this time they get past Carlisle in the FA Cup Northampton in the second round as he scores there but smashed a 3-0 by West Brom at the Hawthorns their league season runs through and it's playoffs again for them as they draw 1-1 with AFC Wimbledon away from home but then at home a nice 1-0 victory to make it into the playoffs final. And he doesn't score in any of these, but yet again, they go up through the playoffs and they're now as high as the championship already. And this ascent is even better than when we gave a club pretty much infinite money. So one high quality striker is enough to fire you up the football league. But I think the championship looks a little bit more tricky for them here. Um, and despite him scoring in most games, you can see they beat Blackburn here in the championship. They beat Southend. He's the one getting the goals. Uh, I think they're much more reliant on him at this level of football. But then they do start to concede goals. And even though they might be scoring a couple, it's not enough if their defence is not quite up to scratch. And you can see this two-all draw here. And then they start losing because he isn't scoring goals. When they do draw against Burnley, he is getting goals. But even then, it's only one goal or so going in. So it's the lack of scoring ability of his teammates that's a problem. Whenever they get a goal... It usually is from him. Uh, they're pretty much all from him. That's the trouble. Uh, but they need to be scoring more goals. These 1-0 victories are a lot to ask of just your one good striker to do the job. And this is where you start to run into the trouble because the club isn't able to ramp up its operation to keep up with the top, top quality striker that they have in the club. But they are getting wins like this. He scores a hat-trick away against Hull to get them three points despite conceding two goals uh, but a very patchy run of form it doesn't look like there's any playoffs or promotion this season no great cup run either but every season they spend in the championship they'll have more money they, they can put into more players and get a better and better defense and midfield to support him up front because he's still getting so many goals here year after year uh, including beating Burnley here Threw in the FA Cup third round, but beaten by Bournemouth on penalties. He scored both goals in that game. 4-1 uh, win over uh, Birmingham. 3-1 over Bournemouth as well. Uh, lots of things happening around the club. 2 all he scores against Wolves, but then they get beaten in the replay 1-0 when he fails to score. And it looks like another season in the championship. Oh, he actually got relegated. Wow, it's that start to the season here. They actually get relegated back down to League One. But of course, they are always going to storm League One going down there and you can see he's scoring goal after goal. They're doing well in the trophies. Another run at the Papa John's Trophy. Out in the fourth round to Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup. They did beat Fulham 1-0. Um, 
And then FA Cup, they're out to Eastley, out in the Papa John's Trophy second round, but they clearly did well enough to get promoted back up to the Championship. And if we have a look at this season here, it's a tough one again. They just really are struggling at the Championship level. They just don't have the players to do it. They need a few seasons in the Championship in order to really progress. And you can see a 4-1 defeat at home to Liverpool there isn't very helpful. They did a bit better towards the end of the season. Maybe they had a January transfer come in. And it's a better start to the Championship this next season as well. A uh, little FA Cup run, but out to Sheffield United. But a much better season in the Championship there. Really consolidating. Um, and they actually made it into the Premier League there. They were automatically promoted. I think at the end, they did really, really well. I wasn't convinced that this little run of poor form... Uh, around around uh, September, October time. But then they really turned it on and managed to get promoted into the Premier League. In his first ever Premier League game, he equalises at home against Chelsea, but they do ultimately lose the game. Beaten 4-2 by Liverpool, but he scores twice at Anfield. A nice result there. Uh, wins over West Ham. Swansea in here. They beat West Ham again. FA Cup third round. Scores at Anfield again. The third time he's done that. And they beat Man United 3-2 as well. He puts them 2-1 up. They go 3-1 up and United pull one back. But the hero there against Man United. He scores as they beat Swansea. They beat Leicester on the final day as well. But back down to the championship. So he has had quite the time of it these uh, first few seasons. He's taken them further then all the money in the world could take our other non-league experiment. And if we have a look at his goal stats, we'll see why. That first season at Kings League, he gets 56 goals in 59 games. A goal a game in the league. And then he gets 49 and 54, 43 and 44 there uh, in the Vanarama National. His first season in proper league football, 34 goals in 40 games, 42 and 52 uh, and then back up to the 40 goal mark in League One. And then it does start to drop off as he makes the championship. Still getting 30 goals a season in the league, though. Uh, and then 31 again in two less games a season after. He scores 37 in all competitions. Back down to League One. The goal rate does drop, uh, jump up again before dropping off back in the championship. Then he has an incredible season in the championship this year. 40 goals in 46 games the first time he scored 40 league goals in a season for five or six years there and then his first season in the premiership playing for a relegated team he still gets 25 premier league goals in 35 premier league games and that is a very very remarkable uh situation if we look at that league table uh, they were relegated by seven points so he did so well to get the goals you can see there, they had 45 goals. There's not too many places ahead of them where people scored more goals. But the trouble is they conceded 67, which I think was the worst in the entire league. Oh, no, second worst after Swansea. Uh, only by three goals, though. So it's maybe a bit unlucky that they ended up as far down as they did. Uh, but the goal's not going in in the right games. And if we look at the award winners here in the Premier League, uh, maybe looking at top goal scorer. He did finish second, one goal behind Latoro Martinez, who's now playing for Brentford, with 25 goals, but ahead of Darwin Nunez. So he was silver boot, I guess, in the Premier League in his debut season there, uh, playing for a team that has come out of non-league football in no time at all. And if we look at Kings Lynn and their overall picture, uh, we will see that they've had quite the climb up the English Pyramid. And here is that climb. Already they were a club on the rise coming out of the English United Counties League Premier Division in 2011-2012. Uh, Back-to-back promotions there. So a club that know how to climb up the pyramid and then quite a bit of time in uh, out of the game leagues really before finally making it in 2018-2019. Back-to-back promotions again. They fell out of the Vanarama National League but look at that bounce back. And then going straight up the table, first, first, seventh through the playoffs was quite lucky. Fourth through the playoffs and then up into the championship, back down, but straight up as runners up in the championship. And then into the Premier League, winning the championship on the way. Now managed by Dean Smith, but you can see if we look at the club's landmarks here, they have had quite a bit of change. Uh, they had... Uh, the chairman leave and a new chairman come in. They move to the community stadium uh, for 5,000 capacity. 
uh, and then their training and youth facilities were upgraded twice and they managed to improve uh, their youth category rating to category three so the club is starting to climb up the leagues so if we look at the club details and their finances you can see they are now in a position where they have 70 million pounds in the bank a really good transfer budget a really good wage budget and looking at their senior squad and their wages you can see 45 grand the most and that obviously goes to Jen Caldo Jr and then Andrew Moran below them so not huge budgets for a team in the Premier League they're doing really well given all of that but they are now in a position where if we look at their overall trophy cabinet there's a lot more high value trophies in there but none of the major competitions at this point so what we'll do now um actually one thing we can look at he is an english striker let's see how england have been getting on with him in the in the squad now i assume he wasn't there for this world cup run but it was a heck of a world cup run in qatar smashing teams there just about getting past senegal on penalties but beating france 3-1 germany 2-1 and then beating the usa 1-0 to win the world cup even without him in the squad and that is a pretty remarkable outcome let's hope that happens this winter um and then let's just keep an eye out i'm sure he will score in his first game but i don't know at what point they would have called him up as he was climbing up the football league there are the european championships here uh, where well, they did make it all the way through to the final and they are world and European champions still he is not in the team but there it is a 2-0 victory over Scotland so probably just missing out on the European Championship final but a 2-0 victory over Scotland where he scored both goals and he started to appear in these England fixtures and then in the World Cup uh, oh that's a qualifying group again he's scoring there um, the Euro Sam South America Super Cup, I guess that's the winner of the European Championship and uh, the uh, Conabal or whatever it's called in South America, but Declan Rice with the winner there and then in International League they did lose to Germany in the final, but they kept on winning games to qualify for another World Cup uh, and he's not on the score sheet in here. He does appear against Denmark in the second round as they win 3-0. Quarter final, not scoring. In the semi final against Belgium, he does score the opening goal there uh, for England to make it 1 1. And then in the World Cup final, it's Mason Mount that scores two goals as England beat Brazil to become two time world champions in a row, third time overall. And then the following season, another international league where they get beaten in the semi finals. They do finish third in the international league, but nobody really cares. Another European Championship where it's more resting on his shoulders, it seems, this time. As he scores in game after game, including a 3-0 win over Scotland. But they were beaten 5-0 in the semi-finals by France. That's an absolute smashing by the French there. Uh, but they do win an international league. He scores in the final as they beat France and get a measure of revenge. And then looking forward uh, the year after uh, the 2030 World Cup here, 12-0 over Zambia and he gets a double hat-trick in the World Cup there uh, eight nil over South Korea and he gets another five goals in that one and they beat Australia five nil another hat-trick there they beat uh, Austria seven nil another hat-trick there they beat Italy two one he scores in that one Portugal four one he scores twice there and then against Belgium he scores four goals in the final in a seven two win and that is a lot of goals in the World Cup there for Giancaldo Jr. If we look at the award winners and take a look at the Golden Boot, he scores 24 goals in seven games. You've got this Chris Tipple guy getting 10 in seven, and even he, he didn't win the Golden Boot, but 24 goals there as England won a third World Cup in a row. He has now won two World Cups already, and he is only 26 years old. So this is a pretty special start to his career given that he has been in the championship and even lower than that for most of that England World Cup run so let's go forward now another 10 years and see how he finishes his career well we're actually 14 years further on from where we left off last time they are back down in the championship we won't linger too long on these except where they have good runs like this 2-1 defeat against Manchester United and they also had a really good FA Cup run into the quarterfinals but beaten 1-0 by West Ham there. They get back up into the Premier League 
Uh, and then another Carabao Cup run here as they manage to get through into the semi-finals. Uh, and then, unfortunately, are... No, they go through on penalties. He scores an 18th minute second goal here after Wolves go down to 10 men. And then in the penalty shootout, they manage to do the job to make it into the Carabao Cup final. They're also in the Premier League and doing reasonably well. And they do win the Carabao Cup 2-1, his first trophy in the top tier of English football. Hopefully the side... Uh, that's more to come. But what an easy run in the Carabao Cup that is. Crew, Fulham, Swansea, Southampton, Wolves, Brentford. A dream way to make sure you get your first piece of silverware. And it looks like they do enough to stay in the Premier League as well. He helps them beat Manchester City 2-1. There's draws against Chelsea and Liverpool in there. A very nice season as they stay in there. And because of their win in the Carabao Cup, they also managed to make it into the Europa Conference League qualifying path. He scores in his first European game. He gets four goals against Antalya Spor. Uh, and then against Randers, he gets a hat-trick as well. And they do make it into the Conference League group stage uh, where they get quite a few wins here. Draw with Club Bruges and Vaduz. Uh, win over Arsenal there as he scores in that one. And they do make it into the Conference League knockout stages but cannot get past Astana. Uh, in the home game there, they weren't able to do enough and they do get knocked out, sadly. But some big wins in the Premier League here. 3-1 away. They went 3-0 up in nine minutes at Stamford Bridge uh, as they stay in the Premier League for yet another season. Knocked out by Liverpool in the Carabao Cup. No European football out of the FA Cup. But a lot of wins. They should be good and they do stay in the Premier League yet again. This time straight into the Europa League. So they actually finished quite high up in the league because that was not through a cup competition and they do quite well here getting a few victories in a row and they're surely into the group stage there with all these wins very nice wins including Benfica 3-0 away from home they actually play Southampton in the round of 16 and despite him scoring away from home at St Mary's they are comprehensively knocked out four goals to two uh, failing to win a single game but it's another great run at the end of the season there so they may well have Europe once more uh, although it doesn't look that way. So despite that good run, they did not make it into Europe and a much tougher time in the Premier League this time as well. But they are not relegated. They do survive. A uh, little FA Cup run here, but out in the quarterfinal to Swansea, which is disappointing. Good end to the season there as well. Uh, and then into the 2038, 39-40 uh, season, sorry. Uh, they do... Uh, I think that's gone too far forward. The game is just glitching out a little bit. They actually made it into the Champions League. So his first Champions League game, he does score against Montpellier. They beat Legia. They beat Schalke. Very friendly. Oh, no, because it's the league phase now, isn't it? But they get three wins off the bounce at the start and then draw with Bayern Munich away from home. They draw with Barcelona at home. They draw with Celtic at home. Uh, with Real Madrid away, that's a lot of draws. They beat Anderlecht as well. It's a very nice run, actually, and they do make it into the last 16. 2-2 two -two with Bayer Leverkusen, and then 1-0 at home. William, William Carlson with an 88th-minute winner in front of 22,000 at the Gary Setchell Stadium. They drill with Atlanta, and then, unfortunately, away from home, they do lose 2-1, despite his early goal giving them hope of a semi-final Champions League berth. Uh, and then in the 40-41 season, they're in the Europa League this time. I mean, how far has this club come off the back of just Giancaldo Jr. up front? And they make it through the Europa League group stage. They beat Levski there uh, in the last 16. And then Nice knocked them out, sadly, at the quarterfinal stage. So no European glory at this point. They're into the Conference League uh, here and this is the last time that he is at the club sadly he doesn't continue going on from here um, but they do make it through into the knockout stages where they beat Ferran Chaveros 4-0 on aggregate through into the FA Cup quarter final as well and then into the semi-final against Mould they get through to the semi-finals of the Europa Conference League sadly lose to Man City here 1-0 and then they beat Victoria Pleasant as well uh, as they make it into the final of the Conference League. And they do win 3-0 in the final. He's done extremely well there. Although I'm just looking. I can't see him scoring. Does he leave the club? I think he might have left the club at this point. I think he was scoring earlier in the season. So, yeah. Uh, I think actually he leaves in January here. 
I think that's what happens. So if we just take a look at him, this is a 2041-42 season. Let's have a look at his history because he is retired now. And you see, yeah, 41-42, he makes a switch to Arsenal because that was the last season that he was scripted to have a transfer and I cancelled the transfer uh, before it got to that point. And as he was in the final year of his contract, it looks like they let him leave for £8.75 million. And the double killer there is that they actually go on and win a European trophy without him. Uh, while he moves to Arsenal. So let's have a little look at Arsenal at that point in the season because it's the second half of that 41-42 season when he's there. So he'll join them in January here where they are still in the Champions League and they have a great little run here from January onwards. They beat Liverpool 3-1, win against Bayern Munich in the last 16. They beat Barcelona in the quarterfinals there. He scores at the new Camp to send them through. They lose 2-1 to United, despite him scoring at Old Trafford. And then they lose 1-0 at home in the Champions League semi-final. So he doesn't get to grace the Champions League final, but they are in an FA Cup final, which he hasn't won yet. But they do win it on penalties. He doesn't score in the penalty shootout. Uh, or doesn't take a penalty anyway, but they do win the FA Cup. So he now has a Carabao Cup and an FA Cup to his name back into the champions league for another season they get past mainz and then in the quarterfinals are beaten home and away by bayern munich and then in his final season as a professional footballer you can see champions league group stage carabao cup out to newcastle but they make it through in the fa cup to the fifth round they beat by leverkusen in the round of 16 go out to brentford in the FA Cup and it's United again, 0-0 away from home and then 1-0 at home. And then in his final game as a footballer, it's against Spurs, but he's not scoring in these games uh, and he seems not to be scoring for a little while here. He scores in that 3-2 game against Brentford. That's his final goal is at the Brentford Community Stadium in a 3-2 win. Um, and sadly, that is his last season as a Prem. Oh no, it's not. He does keep going to the 44-45 season. I guess this must be his last one. I thought I checked these dates, but apparently I checked them very badly. Uh, and you can see he's in the Champions League yet again. Is there any hope of an actual Champions League win here? They get past Real Madrid at 3 2, and he scores twice there and a penalty in the shootout as they get through. It's Newcastle in the quarterfinals where he keeps on scoring. He's trying to drag Arsenal single handedly towards Champions League success. But look who it is there. He scores twice at Old Trafford in the semi final. And in the return game, he scores twice more. But sadly, despite scoring in the penalty shootout and them going 3-0 up with that third penalty, United come back, Arsenal choke, and it is Man United that go to the final. And then Club World Cup, he's still scoring in those ones. I don't know quite when he finishes, but they go out to PSG there. Um, is he still scoring in these games? He is a hat-trick over Dortmund, so he's still got a couple more years left in him here as he tries to win something with Arsenal. They go through with Inter to the Champions League round last 16. They beat Bayern Munich as well. And then it's Man City this time instead of Manchester United. And they get past them in the semi-final of the Champions League. So his last game as a, prof as a professional footballer is the Champions League final. This is actually news to me. I thought he'd retired two years ago, so I haven't looked at this yet. Does he win the Champions League? No, they lose it on penalty to Spurs. That is outrageous what a last game that is at old trafford no less the place that they keep on getting knocked out of the champions league and a one-all draw in his last game as a footballer with arsenal imagine the state of the arsenal fans if they lost the champions league final to spurs wow that is quite the outcome he scores in that game at old trafford to draw the game up but he doesn't get the chance to take a penalty and arsenal famously bad at penalties and that is his final game he scores at Old Trafford in a Champions League final but it is sadly in vain he does up his scoring great in the Premier League quite a bit uh, after the move to Arsenal you can see that he is getting like 30 goals a season here and it stays around 30 goals a season to be fair when he's at Arsenal um, but he has had a very interesting season here if we have a look at his milestones and what he's managed to win um, throughout his career then starting very early on he's in the under 21 champions uh, championship for England and he manages to win that you can see them getting promoted and up in various leagues um, 
World Cup winners there while he's still in League One, I think, at that point. Uh, relegated from the Championship. They win the International League. They win the World Cup again um, as he's named the Championship Player of the Year. They do get out of the Championship and then relegated again. They win the European Championship while he's still in the Sky Bet Championship. Another Europa League, another World Cup, another International League. Um, so not many cup competitions keep someone winning the World Cup with England, International League, European Championships, World Cup winners. This is when he moves to Arsenal for 8.75 million, which feels like an absolute steal. And he does win the World Player of the Year. He's picking up a few of these at this point. But it looks like he never wins a trophy with Arsenal. That is crazy. Let's have a look at the Premier League over the last few years that he's been a Premier League footballer. Maybe drop back about 10 years here to where we left off last time. And you can see, I don't think we ever looked at Kingsley in the Premier League, so let's just drop back a bit further. Um, they're not in the league that year. The next year, they're not in the league. When do they appear in the league? Still not there. When are we? 31, 32? There we go. That was their first season where they got relegated by seven points. We saw that. They came back up. They finished 15th, but won the Carabao Cup to get into Europe the next year. They finished 10th, so climbing up the table. Then 6th as they qualified for Europe. They dropped down to 9th, 9th, and then 5th as they qualified for the Champions League. England get an extra uh, Champions League place with the new Champions League format. And then 6th, sadly, by three points the following year. 8th the year after that. And then after that, they finish 15th and start to struggle down in 17th place. Arsenal in 2nd. This, uh, by this point, he's made the transfer and they finish second behind Newcastle by four points. Kings Lynn just avoiding relegation there again as Arsenal finish fourth. And then Arsenal finish second, six points off. Uh, and Kings Lynn climb up the table a bit. Arsenal finish second to Spurs again. Oh, that's the final season as well. So Spurs, Pip, Arsenal and our best player in the world to both the Champions League and the Premier League in his final season as a footballer. That is such a killer that that happened. But Kings Lynn have established themselves as a proper Premier League side, which is nice to see. Uh, you can see they've been in there now for a very long time. Uh, if we look at their trophy cabinet as well, they do have that Conference League in there, a couple of championships, a Carabao Cup as well. So uh, they've done a good job there. And if we have a look at Jen Caldo Jr. as well, and just look at his biography here to get a sense of him as a player. 946 appearances and 731 goals. He scored 211 goal, 228 goals in 211 games for England. And he is now a head of youth development looking for a job. But look at those trophies in there. He won four World Cups and two European Championships. Um, lots of uh, four international leagues in there. Uh, a couple of championships in there but he didn't really win anything other than the Carabao Cup uh, you can see them all listed here what well, he did manage to win never win anything with Arsenal I don't know why he went to Arsenal he would have won a lot more somewhere else um, but if we look at some of these individual ones he won a lot of competition awards I'm just looking for the big ones that we care about about World Cup best player he won that four times in a row World Cup golden boot he won that four times in a row England Player of the Year, World Footballer of the Year, seven times, three times with Kings Lynn, three times with Arsenal. Oh, was that? Yeah, three times with Kings Lynn. Oh, he did win it here in 2031 as well, and then had a long break before winning it again. So much more celebrated later in his career. Now, where's the uh, Golden Shoe, World Golden Ball? How many times did he win this? So you can see. Won it 2034, 35, won it 36, 37, and then twice in a row, but never won it with Arsenal. Uh, he did finish second uh, one season, but otherwise getting beaten to it time after time. But he did do reasonably well with the individual honours. Uh, and you can see if we have a look uh, at England and their senior squad schedule, I just want to check in on the World Cup. Uh, which is still ongoing. Uh, but if we look at 
the past winners of the World Cup. England, 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 England. He has won a lot. England have won a lot of World Cups. And I think we can put a lot of that down to Giancaldo Jr. So he's had a pretty impressive career. He's turned Lings in, Kings Lynn into a proper Premier League team, which 30 years with unlimited money failed to do in our last experiment. So quite the single-handed performance that he's put in, turning England into that absolutely unstoppable fo force in world football, getting Kings Lynn from non-league football into the Premier League, and yet somehow being incapable of helping Arsenal win any trophies, uh, which has to say something about Arsenal. Uh, I'm afraid. Uh, but that is going to be it for today's episode. Do let me know down in the comments if there's other experiments you'd like to see and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. But until next time, see ya!